Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at charge and potential difference across a capacitor. So let's get into it. Now, we've already seen that charge will build up on the plates of a capacitor, and due to the electric field created between the positively and negatively charged plates, a potential difference will also be produced. An experiment can be carried out to investigate the relationship between the potential difference across a capacitor and the charge stored on it. A suitable circuit to achieve this is shown below. So here's a circuit diagram you could set up in order to investigate this relationship. So you've got a DC source over here with a positive and negative terminal, you've got a voltmeter in parallel with a capacitor here, and you've also got a switch which can move between parts A and B. We've then got a resistor and a coulomb meter in series with each other, where the coulomb meter can measure the charge on the capacitor. So when the switch is set to A, we can charge up the capacitor because the electrons will flow from negative round here onto the capacitor plates, and then we can do something called discharging the capacitor by moving the switch to part B, where we no longer have the capacitor connected to the battery, but the capacitor can discharge where it loses its charge and the coulomb meter can tell us what this charge is. So it says the charge stored in the capacitor is measured with a coulomb meter when the capacitor is charged to a variety of different potential differences. So just to show you a quick simulation of how you might do this. So here's a setup of how you might carry out this experiment. So this just has the parts that we've just seen in the circuit diagram. Our voltmeter in parallel with the capacitor to get the voltage across it, and the coulomb meter here in order to measure the charge. So it says firstly to note the voltage across the capacitor. So you would note down the voltage on the voltmeter, which is the voltage across the capacitor to begin with. Then what you would do is discharge the capacitor by moving the switch to here, and that is going to discharge to the coulomb meter, and we would then note down the charge that was stored in the plates of the capacitor. We would then repeat this for other charging voltages, and then use an appropriate format to show the relationship between charge and voltage, such as writing down your values in a table, and then plotting a graph from this table of results. So let's say we have a table of potential difference in volts and charge in millicoulombs. Then we would initially write down our first voltage, 1.55 volts, and then discharge the capacitor through the coulomb meter, and you'll see our first value is 7.6 millicoulombs. We would then charge the capacitor and increase the voltage to the next one, 3.03 volts, and then discharge the capacitor again. This time we get 15.1 millicoulombs. We could then charge the capacitor again, increase the voltage to 4.54 volts, and then discharge the capacitor, and we get 22.7 millicoulombs. We could then charge it again, increase the voltage to 6.02 volts, and discharge, giving us 30.2 millicoulombs. We could then increase the charging voltage again to get 7.53 volts, and then discharge through the capacitor, and we get 37.7 millicoulombs. And then the last one, increasing the charging voltage to 9.05 volts, we could then discharge through the capacitor and write down our 45.4 millicoulombs. Now because we obtained six values of potential difference and six values of charge, we would then have six data points on our graph. Going back to the notes now, if you were to plot a graph of charge on the y-axis against potential difference on the x-axis, this is what you would see. So you would see a graph with a straight line through the origin. And what this tells us is that the charge on a capacitor is directly proportional to the potential difference across it. Or in symbol form, we could say Q is directly proportional to V. Or remember the little mathematical trick, in order to get rid of this directly proportional sign, if we want to introduce an equal sign, we need to multiply this thing on the right hand side by a constant. So this gives us Q equals a constant times V, i.e. Q equals CV where the capacitance C is a constant. And we say that capacitance is given by the gradient of the line on a charge potential difference graph. So looking back at the graph, if you have charge on the y-axis and potential difference on the x-axis, and then you calculate the gradient of this line, remember the gradient of a straight line is going to be the same at all points. And because this is the capacitance of the capacitor, then we say the capacitance will be constant because it's the same at each point on this line. So choosing two points on this line and doing the change in y over the change in x to get the gradient will give you the capacitance of the capacitor. So from this expression Q equals CV, we have the definition for capacitance. And we say the capacitance C of a capacitor is the charge stored per volt of potential difference across it. So charge stored per volt is the same as Q over V, so we have that C equals Q over V. Where C is the capacitance measured in farads with a capital F, Q is charge measured in coulombs with a capital C, and V is potential difference measured in volts with a capital V. You should note that when dealing with capacitance values, one farad is a very large capacitance, so in practice we tend to use microfarads or nanofarads in calculations involving capacitance. It's very rare to see something like a one farad capacitor because that is a very large capacitance. From this definition, we say that a capacitor of one farad will store one coulomb of charge when the potential difference across it is one volt. And from the equation C equals Q over V, 
we have that 1 farad is equal to 1 coulomb per volt. We can see that just by looking at the units of each of these terms in the equation. So remember that, so remember capacitance on the left, so remember capacitance is measured in farad, so we have 1 farad is equal to 1 coulomb for the charge divided by 1 volt for the potential difference. So 1 farad is equal to 1 coulomb per volt. And lastly, it says here that for a constant charge in current I, we can use the following relationship to determine the charge Q stored in a capacitor over a certain time T. Q equals IT, where the symbols have their usual meanings, so charge Q is the charge in coulombs, I is the current in amperes or amps, and T is the time in seconds. And this equation should be familiar to you from National 5 Physics. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.